And there are two passages in the New Testament. One is in Matthew chapter uh, 24 and one is in Luke 21, where Jesus basically gives the same message, the message of what will happen at the end times. And we've already spoken about a lot of those things. But one thing he talks about is that at the end, there will be what's called a great persecution. Now, a persecution doesn't sound fun for those who understand what that means. For those who don't understand, it simply means life's going to get tough. People aren't going to be very nice to us. And it's going to be towards those who believe in God. We've already spoken about the fact that the world in those days will be in the hands of people who are anti-Christian. Therefore, you can understand that a Christian won't be popular. The Bible won't be popular. And in some places, that's already happening. And Jesus says that the Christians will be arrested. They will be taken. Here's some a Christian here being arrested. <laughs> Now, I wanted them to look like policemen. They look a bit more like milkmen, I think. <laughs> um, but they are policemen. I don't know what the police will look like in those days. But he's being arrested. And the Bible says that it's not just people who are coming in from outside. There will be a betrayal. And it will be, be by people who know that we're Christians and they will re report us. But here's the thing. Jesus says it might even be members of our own family. Now, let me say this. If you're a family full of Christians, they're not going to be betraying you. This is talking more about where there's a Christian in a family who might be betrayed by somebody who isn't. But it sounds pretty shocking, doesn't it? And he says these people, what's going to happen to them is they are going to be put in prison. Now, you can imagine that somebody who's put in prison for believing in God might very realistically say, why am I in prison? Why am I suffering like this? Lord, what happened? What went wrong? And God's saying to us, nothing's gone wrong. This is all part of the plan. He says, because from there, you will be taken from prison and you will then have an opportunity to speak in front of kings and governors, all on account of my name, says Jesus. You will have a chance to testify. Now, I know for a lot of people, that's the most terrifying thing of all, isn't it? To stand up and have to speak about Jesus. But Jesus goes on to say, don't worry about what you say, because the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Why are we having to go through this? Because he says that people will be confounded by what they hear. When the Holy Spirit speaks through you, the people who are condemning you, they won't have anything to say against you. They won't be able to contradict you. They won't be able to dispute with you because they'll be hearing the word of God coming through you. And this whole process might be that many come to a faith in Jesus Christ and know God for themselves. And here's the thing that God says. He says, some of you will be put to death. Now that's, again, a frightening thing, but he reminds us that it's not for this life only. And he says something in the same passage, which a lot of people have misunderstood. He says, not a hair on your head will perish. Now that sounds strange, doesn't it? If we've been put to death, yet not a hair of our head will perish. But he's not talking about this life. He's saying that when you stand before God, your eternal life, not one hair or whatever that eternal life looks like will perish because you will now enter into your final reward. You will enter into eternal life and be with your Savior forever and ever. What a wonderful thing. And Jesus says, get your minds off this world, off this life, off all the plans you've made here and start thinking about the greater, better, eternal life to come. You see, Jesus says all these things and we might think, well, Jesus, it's easy for you to say that. You haven't gone through it. But remember, he has gone through it. He was betrayed. He was arrested. He had to speak in front of kings and governors. He had to speak in such a way that nobody could dispute with him. He was put to death unjustly. And where is he now? At the right hand of God in eternity, in glory, knowing that all the pain and all the suffering is now over. If Jesus has gone through that, he says to us, I know what you're going through because I went through it too. And we need to remember that as he has come through the other side, we who trust in Christ will do the same thing.